Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we are in the Phase 2 public test server, and I am going to be showing you guys how vehicle loading onto trailers works now and how you can secure vehicles to the back of your trailer in the public test server build of Phase 2. Now, when this ends up coming to consoles and the release version on PC, you guys will be able to do this in your game yourself, but currently, like I said, this feature is only available in the public test server on the PC version of the game. Now, with all of that being said, first we need to couple of things one we need a we need a truck that could pull trailers so what we're going to do is we're going to take this little 1500 into the garage and swap it out for something a bit more uh capable let's say so i'm going to use now there are obviously there are many different ways you can do this Hey, there's the little telehandler. Now, there are many different ways that you could do this, and really any surface that you can pack cargo onto, you can, in theory, secure a vehicle to. Meaning flatbeds, sideboards, uh, flatbed trailers, really almost any kind of trailer you can think of will allow you the ability to strap down vehicles. So I'm actually going to grab the International Transstar, and I, I don't really need anything crazy. Really all I need is, we'll do a high range box. Really all I need is something with some highway tires on it, and, you know, a probably a saddle low, just to keep things, keep things simple. And we'll go ahead and throw that on the back. And now, obviously, there's a ton of new customization features. We're not really going to touch on those much. This video is about trailers, like I said. So let me go ahead and turn this thing around real quick. And obviously, we have no all-wheel drive or diff lock, but we don't really need either of those things for this demonstration. So any of these trailers, like I said before, will work. However, some of the easiest ones to use are obviously the ramped trailers. Like, for example, the Gooseneck Semi. The Gooseneck Semi is probably the best one for this demonstration, especially if you're talking about a highway trailer. And, or at least a highway-ready trailer. I mean, this thing, with especially with the little, uh, the little basically side markers on the sides of the trailer, you wouldn't really get very far with this trailer off-road. Now, what I'm going to use to demonstrate this is a variety of different vehicles. And actually, I'm going to pull this one up just a little bit further. And we're going to go ahead and activate the ramps. Now, I'm going to swap into the... Oh, it won't let me swap into the Azov. Are you serious? All right. I'll just buy another truck then. I love how they're like, nope, we're not going to let you swap into the Azov. That's not for you. And I'm like, all right, fair enough. So what we're going to do now is we'll grab, say, for example, the TUZ420 Tatran. And I'll show you guys how this loads up. And then I'll also show you guys how the trailer would load when you use a variety of small and large vehicles. So let's see how many slots this takes up on the trailer. Because it will actually show you, which is a really cool feature. So the ramps are already down and they are already ready for loading. So let's go ahead and approach the trailer now and make sure we're fairly aligned. Make our way up onto the trailer. And if we go all the way forward, stop the engine, swap over to the Transstar, and then click... Hold on. There we go. Let's see. Remove cargo. Really? So that can't pack on this trailer. It must be too wide. That's really interesting. It must be too wide. I bet you that if the wheels exceed the width of the trailer, I bet you it won't work. That's probably, that's probably the issue we're running into. Because if you look, we can go ahead and spawn something really simple. Like, say, for example, a Dawn 71... And a Dawn 71 will go up there and actually strap down with no issues at all. So let's go ahead and drive the Dawn up there. The Dawn is very small and very narrow, but again, that will make it very easy to pack. So we'll go ahead and drive it up to the front bit of the trailer. Stop the engine, swap trucks, and pack trucks. So as you can see, once we pack trucks, that basically puts wheel chocks on the trailer where the vehicle is actually suspended and now the vehicle won't move or roll roll back and forth on the trailer now it can fall off if you get too much of a trailer angle obviously and it'll just flop to the side but 
that was actually an interesting discovery because I didn't realize now granted logic would dictate that if the vehicle in question was wider than the trailer at hand it wouldn't be able to pack but that just confirms my theory on that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of free camera and we're going to remove the Tatrin and I'm actually going to add in the cat where is the cat all right this not the 745 because that won't pack the uh, TH-357. Now, the TH-357 is the telehandler, a.k.a. the forklift, and with that, I'm sure it will be just narrow enough to pack on that trailer. And the very interesting thing about this is that it also works with modded vehicles and modded trailers, like, for example, the gooseneck trailer behind Red's first gen. So that, in and of itself, is a huge deal. The fact that it seems to go ahead and just immediately interface with mods that already exist. I think that's an incredible feature. So let's go ahead and drive that guy up on the trailer and shut the engine off, go back to the Transstar and unpack trucks and then pack trucks. Now, basically at this point, it treats it exactly like cargo. And as you can see, all four slots on the trailer, well, it's actually behind my face cam, but the area where it would show you how many slots on the trailer are full all four units of cargo are full because, obviously, they're all taken up by the vehicles themselves. Now, the interesting thing about this is the fact that once you've got these vehicles loaded on the trailer and packed, you can no longer switch to them. They're basically treated as normal cargo would be treated in the game. However, once you unpack them, you're free to drive them around and you're free to back them off the trailer as you see fit. Paint this one blue. We never we never usually paint it blue. We'll throw beans in there, and then we will throw... Eh, throw the dice in there. There we go. That works. So now we'll leave the garage, and since we're using a modded truck... Now, originally I had my concerns that this wouldn't actually work properly. However, getting the chance to use all the new features of this update, or all the new features of Phase 2, really, have opened my eyes to a lot of... Like, a, not only a lot of really interesting features, but a lot of the ways that they really made it possible for these features to just interface with mods directly and so incredibly easily. So, we'll go ahead and park this guy right here, and we will throw the ramps down, and then we'll go ahead and shut the truck off. And I'm curious to know if, at this point, we could actually use a 8x8 um, to throw onto the back of that truck. Now, let's see. I'm going to probably... I doubt a twin steer will fit. Let's try the Dan. The Dan is an odd truck, but at the same time, I have a feeling that if we could actually load it up, it would be very cool to see. So, let's throw some mud tires on it. Let's throw some advanced heavy spare wheel. And we'll throw a... We'll throw a van body just for the sake of pure, you know, insane size. Throw beans on the dash, and let's see. Warning, harsh driver, and yeah, we'll throw a warning, harsh driver on the door just to have some fun with it. All right, we'll get the Dan started up. It really is a beast of a truck, this thing, and a lot of people don't really, they don't really pay all that much attention to it, like, especially after they discover it in Tamir, they kind of leave it alone, and... In my mind, it's actually a really good truck if you're willing to ignore the atrocious approach angle. And that's just an inherent quality of the, of the truck itself. So let's see if this will actually pack on the gooseneck. Now, I know that some other vehicles will. Oh, I shouldn't have used the lifted gooseneck. Yeah, I shouldn't have used the lifted gooseneck. Should have used the standard one. But unfortunately... I have made an error in my ways. I have definitely made an error in my ways. Here, let's go ahead and actually remove the lifted gooseneck. And we will also... Let's see. Lifted toe. Default toe. And then we'll bring... Oh, geez. That is no good. I just want a dually of some sort. Oh, there, there they are. That'll work. That'll work. That's close enough. Okay. Now, normal gooseneck, just to get it a tiny bit lower. 
And now we'll put the ramps down and see if it works properly now. Stop engine, change truck back to the Dan. We'll lock it in low plus. Creep up to it and then give her the beans. Oh! The Dan seems a bit heavy. The Dan seems very heavy. Well, it's up. I can't say I was kind to the Dodge, but it's up. Oh, Lord. Yo, if this packs, I'll be really surprised. I don't think it's going to pack. No, there's no way it's going to pack. Okay, so basically, again, like I said before, it has to be within the realm of what could realistically fit on the back of this truck. And it makes sense. It really does. So let's put, let's actually put something on the back of this thing, though, just to make sure. Actually, ooh, a mod packing on top of another mod. That is one that I haven't tried yet, but I feel like it could work. We'll back that up, back that up, back that up, and throw it into low plus. Bring the Forerunner on up. Now, we'll shut that down, go back into the Dodge Ram, and pack trucks. And as you can see, as you can see, we clearly have a modded truck packed on top of a modded trailer being towed by a modded truck. This is literally the future right now. I mean, this is this is 100% the future of SnowRunner and the future of mods as we know them. And this opens up the door for a whole host of new things that you could try, new roleplay scenarios, new ways to get vehicles around a campaign map, new ways to move loads from one place to another. It really opens up so many new possibilities, and I am really happy to be able to demonstrate that here for you guys, especially for the people that don't have the PC version and are not able to get on the PTS. But if you do have the PC version and you haven't gotten on the PTS yet, what are you doing? So, with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.